Hello, welcome back. <laughs> um, okay, oh my gosh, y'all. My doctor appointment today was, uh, there have been a lot of them that were ridiculously fascinating, but today just like blew my mind. <laughs> um, we started out, obviously, just checking in, see how I was doing. And I also told him about how the pain was. And, and that, because he asked me, because during the, the lunch talk, uh, he was there. My doctor, Dr. Streit, was there. Um, pretty much everybody went. All the doctors, all the patients, and the staff. I, you know, I, I think pretty much everybody was there. Um, and I, I would sit for some of it, and then I'd get up, walk around, stand in the back, which is common for me. But today it was more. Wasn't pain. It was that my core muscles feel really tired and weak and stressed. And so, um, Dr. Streit asked me in my appointment, he said, I saw you getting up, you know, how's your pain? I saw you getting up, walking around and stuff. And I said, well, it's really not really pain, it's just, I'm not sure if my core muscles are so weak from all these years of not being able to sit right or stand or use the core muscles the way they're supposed to be used. And he's, you know, certainly is a possibility he didn't really, um, say one way or the other, um, but that seems like a reasonable guess of what's happening. And I, I would assume that must be it because then, you know, when I get on the table, he checks everything out. He said the discs are still holding really well um, and that I shouldn't have to be concerned about, you know, obviously I'm not going to go climb a mountain, but, you know, know, know my limitations, but don't have to be afraid to do everyday activities like that disc, those discs are going to just slip right out again, which I was wondering about. So he said they should be fine. Um... And he said everything is still checking out well, so there must, you know, I'm, again, I, it must just be fatigue and weakness from all these years of not being able to use the core muscles well. Um, then one thing he asked me yesterday, if I'd tried to read anything, how my reading retention and ability was, because that's one, a big thing with people of, of Lyme disease and other chronic illnesses, but especially Lyme disease is brain fog, and you can't, you'll read something over and over and over again and you can't understand it or you can't retain it. And I was definitely having those struggles. Um, I think I wasn't having them to an extreme, but I was definitely struggling. And so he asked me yesterday if I have read anything now since I've been here to see how my reading retention is and my reading comprehension. And so I checked. So I hadn't checked yet by yesterday. I hadn't even thought of doing something like that. But last, so last night I was curious, so I had brought a book along. It's about healing um scriptural stuff about biblical healing from god and i was reading that and i actually read a good 40 to 50 pages of it without trouble first of all i didn't it wasn't super comfortable but i could actually hold the book and read and i was laying down so that would always put a lot of stress on my hands to hold a book up <laughs> so i mean there was still some small amount of stress and I certainly wouldn't want to do that for hours, but I was able to do it for probably close to an hour, which is a pretty big deal without um, excessive pain. You know, I had some fatigue and discomfort, but not a lot of pain in the wrists, so that was amazing. But also, I could pretty much understand what I was reading and retain most of it. I had a few areas of difficulty, but what makes that really uh, an obvious step forward is that a lot of what I was reading was quoting scripture. Actually, the majority of it would just quote scripture, and then there'd just be small snippets of commentary on that. And But it was, I, I forget which version of the Bible it was quoting, but it was one of the hard ones to read, like the King James or something. So it, it's not only that I was able to understand what I was reading, but I was actually reading something really difficult to understand, and was pretty much getting it on the first try. I wasn't having to reread it too much of it. Some of it I did, and then... I did retain most of it. I'd have to go back sometimes and be like, oh, I don't remember what I just read there. But um, so mostly pretty big victory. So that was exciting. He was happy about that too. Um, also, during the lunch talk, I noticed I was sitting in the back of the room. The doctor was at the front of the room with, and he had a PowerPoint presentation on the wall. And I was looking at the words, you know, reading through his first slide, just sitting there waiting for him to start. And I was like, hey, I think I can see better. 
So kind of adjusted my glasses and I was looking. I was like, yeah, everything. I looked at the words. Then I started looking at people's faces. Um, I haven't really tried to look at things long distance since I've been here. I haven't noticed any changes in my actual vision, but um, my long distance vision is, you know, it's, it's blurry. It's not clear. There's usually a lot of hazy things around what I'm looking at. I always have to adjust my face to adjust the angle of my glasses to, like, um, minimize all the haziness and um, sort of, like, it's not really blurriness, but it's, like, everything has not clear-cut edges. So... I was looking at pretty small words, relatively small for what was on the wall, and I could see them clearly, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing! Because, <laughs> I mean, that's certainly not something I expected anything to change while I was here. There's a lot of stuff I expected them to be able to help me with, but my vision wasn't... Just like my teeth, too, last week, when I realized that my teeth weren't sensitive. Certain, those are just, like, complete unexpected improvements. And not something I was even thinking about. So that's, it's just fun <laughs> to have those little things. It's like, hey, <laughs> this, uh, this thing is different. And I wasn't even looking for it to be different. It was really cool. Um, so then uh, when we started, he started me face down again. He put the magnets uh, and the oil on my back to like bring the polarities back to the way they're supposed to be. Balancing energies, things like that. And then he actually did some manual adjustments of my bones, and then he did the jackhammer thing, which is actually bladder stimulation. They're like the bladder circuit, not just your bladder, but he's stimulating that circuit on your back, and it's putting the little vertebrae back where they belong. Um, and, I, and I asked him, I said, my bones really seem to not, how did I say it? I forget what exactly I said, but what I was saying was my bones don't seem to be as ridiculously out of place and out of alignment as I as they have seemed like they are all this time and, and like I expected him to find. There really has been minimal need to work with the bone structure. So he said, yeah, part of that is that what with using that, what I've been referring to as the jackhammer on the spine that eliminates the need for so much of chiropractic adjustment because it takes care of the main misalignments and then all the smaller ones just correct themselves and then sometimes you have to go in and do a few other ones which is what he's been doing. Um, so that was really cool. I'll have to see if I can find a chiropractor nearby who uses that because that, I mean really, it's completely different than regular chiropractic care and so much, seems to be so much more effective. So. Um, I don't know if anybody else does it besides these folks or if I'll be able to find someone nearby who does it, but I'll have to check into it. So he did that, and then he mixed up. I asked him what I was wondering, actually, was if there was an essential oil that I maybe could use instead of the valerian. Just not because I mind taking the valerian. I'm just thinking of availability and stock and all of that. <laughs> and maybe if there was an oil, because it might be easier to get a hold of. Um, that I could use that and he actually then he just mixed me up a concoction of his own and it wasn't an essential oil which wasn't exactly what I was looking for but I thought eh, you know I've been on the Valerian for a long time it'd be good to try something else so I'm gonna try this and and see how it does so he mixed me up a sleep concoction and then we got into the really interesting part of the whole thing which was checking the brain heart connection and that was super fascinating. I can't believe actually I just talked another 10 minutes and didn't even, almost 10 minutes and didn't even get to that yet. I'm going to stop this again. So come back for part three. Sorry I talked so long on this one. <laughs> I meant this to be the, the entire, the end of it, but we'll have another part. So come back for part three.